Welcome back traders, it's John from Rain King. I'm recording this video on August 31st, a Thursday after the close. I'll be traveling on Friday to San Francisco for the conference, so I wanted to get this update out tonight. So again, as a reminder, I'm an amateur individual growth stock investor, but I've been doing this for about 20 years and I'm not affiliated with MarketSmith or IBD. Here's our agenda for tonight. NASDAQ, we'll go over that and some market internals. Then we're going to monitor for a change of trend. And then we're going to look at the big eight and rank the big eight. And then we're going to spend a lot of time on charts, weekly charts, looking at some watch list ideas. And then we'll wrap up. So let's get into the indices and some of the internals of the market. So this is the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, as of the close today. Um, you know, we had a follow through day on uh, a couple of days ago, day eight follow through day, 1.74% on higher volume. So we had that. So we've been rallying for a few days here and want to break this down to see if this is a healthy rally or what we're seeing uh, with the data. So we've been rallying for about five days. Now, the volume has been very, very slow, really, really poor. The last week of August typically is a very slow week. Now, a couple things to take note of. One is we are currently about 2% off the highs in the queues, yet the net new highs continue to struggle. We are still below 50 net new highs. That's concerning because um, we really, on a rally, should be above that. Now, you'll also notice that the up-down volume on the queues is still below one. So we don't even have signs of accumulation yet, even though the indexes are kind of floating floating higher on uh, weak volume. Now, over here, I showed you the last rally we had. You know, we had a rally. You can see we had above 50 net new highs. There's this line I've drawn at 50. So you can see multiple days, whereas we're progressing to new highs, we should be at least above 50. And that's really a minimum, frankly. Now, you might say, well, geez, John, that's at new highs. We're not at new highs yet. Well, here's what I would say. Take a look at the last pullback that we had in uh, June, late June, we had a pullback. And then we just started to creep up coming out of that pullback and we were already at at least 50 new highs. So we haven't even gotten that yet. So it's it's not a great picture. It's, it's really showing some weak internals in the market. Now, looking at some other internal breadth measures on the advanced decline line for just the S&P 500, and this is a longer term chart, looking at a three-year chart weekly. You can see that we had this long resistance area and we got above that when we rallied this summer. And we've come back and kind of tested that and it looks like we're turning back up with the breadth on the S&P. So that looks good, that looks constructive. Now, if we go on a broader level and we look at the, the entire New York Stock Exchange and looking at the advanced decline line, you can see that um, it's been a little more choppy. We're not at new highs. Um, but we are still maintaining an uptrend. So we came back pretty sharply, got concerning, um, but we have appeared to get some support in here. So that's a good sign um, from the broader market. So let's look at the change of trend. What are we looking for and how do we monitor that? Last video, I talked about some things I'd be looking for. So we talked about we needed a follow through day. Well, yes, we got the follow through day. It was a day eight. 1.74%. Now on a follow through day, we should see lots of stocks acting very strong, breaking out of proper bases, and we should see setups. So are we seeing setups? I would say no, there's very few stocks that are in proper bases that have based properly for the required number of weeks. So we really don't have many setups at all, um, in my opinion, for growth stocks. Now, are we do, I, do we have the net new highs? And so far, as I mentioned, it's been very, very weak on the net new high front. We've just barely turned positive. It's a little better on the S&P, uh, but in general, it's weak so far. Do we have three consecutive days above the 20-day? The yes, that's a positive. Want to see the positive breadth measures of advanced decliners be at least three to one or better for two or three days over this week. And we have seen the S&P have a couple three to one days, which is encouraging. And we mentioned that the New York Stock Exchange breadth is improving, but it has some work to do. Volume, volume is very, very low, typical for the last week of summer. Traders will be back next week and we'll get a better indication of what their appetite is 
for growth stocks. And if this rally will have legs or does it get slammed back quickly? Now we had the PCE report for July today. Um, it was fairly aligned with what the expectations were. And there were some things in the report that you could read positively and some things negatively. Didn't have a huge effect on the market. Um, we'll have to see if how the Fed interprets that as we approach the uh, later September um, Fed meeting. So I want to look at the weekly charts now. We're going to look at the big eight and we want to try and break this down. So who are the big eight? The big eight are basically the FANG stocks, um, plus a couple of others, such as NVIDIA and Tesla. So what I wanted to show is some of these major indexes and how tech really, really has some high weightings. So if we look at the technology ETF, XLK, um, Apple is 22% of the weighting and Microsoft is also 22% of the weighting. So only two names in this ETF are accounting for just below half of the index. So if this index is going to move, these two stocks probably need to, to move as well. Now, if we look at the NASDAQ 100 and start to break it down, there are four names which occupy um, almost 31% of the weighting of the Qs. Again, Apple and Microsoft dominate, and then Amazon and NVIDIA are the next two. But that's a pretty big chunk. So these stocks probably are going to need to perform if we're going to get the Qs to continue to move higher. Now, even looking at the S&P 500, which is acting a little bit better, um, you can notice that if we look at some of the major sectors, info technology, which is technology, is almost 28% of the S&P these days with um, a lot of these components in them. Consumer discretionary has Tesla in it. Uh, communications has Google and uh, Meta in it. So you can see almost half of the S&P is related to some of the technology stocks. And so I'm showing you this because um, if we're going to get a move that's sustainable, um, these, these indexes really can't move much without the big eight leading the way. So let's go further and break down and rank the big eight. So look at this little data table that I put here. Now, what we say is, well, how do you determine which one is the strongest and which is the weakest? Well, it's fairly simple which one went up the most from the breakout and gave back the least. So if we just rank those and say from the breakout point, what gained the most? Well, NVIDIA gained the most, 183%. The least was Apple. Now, excuse me, it's Google, but Apple was down here lower for a reason I'll get to in a moment. The give back or the correction after the run-up, how much was it? Well, look at NVIDIA's case. It ran 183% gave back a tiny amount, only 16%, leading to net gains of 167. So if we follow that methodology and rank, Meta will come up second, strong run up, very little give back. And you'll notice that Amazon, Netflix, and Google had less of a run up, um, fairly modest give backs, but you'll notice that the last three, Microsoft, Tesla, and Apple, um, had run-ups between about 30 and 45%, but you can see the givebacks are much more, particularly Tesla. It ran up 44%, but it gave back a lot. And so the net gains are not that impressive. Also looking at up-down volume. You know, NVIDIA is just below one, but the top names still are above one showing accumulation, where some of the ones in the lower ranking are no longer showing a lot of accumulation. And then a quick measure looking at the 50-day, the 20-day, and what's the position of the stock. NVIDIA is above its 50 and 20, and it's perched really close to all-time highs. You can see it on the chart over here. We've talked about the 500 psychological level um, possibly being a stumbling block for NVIDIA, and that it may need to base out just below that and form a proper base before it blasts higher. So uh, Meta is also acting well. It's still below its 50 and 20, but it's actually came down to the 50 and undercut it slightly. And it actually got support at the 65 uh, EMA. So you can see that maybe this is gonna form a base and we're gonna form the right side of a proper base, but it's gonna take some time. Amazon, number three on my rankings, is actually showing a simple pullback to the 50 day. It hasn't really undercut the 50 day. So this might be simply a pullback and resuming its uptrend. So that's acting well as, as you know, in addition to Meta, and NVIDIA. So those are really the strongest of the big eight right now. Now, if we continue, here's Netflix, Google, and Microsoft. Netflix 
um, has come down below the 50 day and even market Smith is picking up. It's forming a new base. So it needs to round out this base, hopefully gathering some accumulation. Now, Google, you might say, actually on a relative strength basis is one of the stronger stocks that hasn't really even corrected. It went sideways when the queues came in. So it could just resume its uptrend and continue to work its way higher. So Google's acting probably one of the better ones out of the eight. Microsoft came down fairly hard and you can see it needs to form and round out the right side of a base. That's gonna take time. So getting to the last two in the group, Tesla and Apple. Now Tesla is a little concerning that it gave back a lot. Um, you know, a 29% dip or give back probably means this thing is gonna take some time to maybe it forms a double bottom, maybe it's a longer consolidation cup with handle, um, but it has more work to do um, to, to get going again. Apple, we've talked about the, I think it was 189-ish level, which was the 3 trillion valuation being a stumbling block for the stock. Um, not surprising to see this form some sort of base below that 3 trillion level, and hopefully uh, it could blast up above higher and help the group. Um, as I mentioned, Apple and uh, Microsoft dominate a number of these indexes. So that's my ranking of the big eight right now. NVIDIA and Meta are the strongest. Apple and Tesla are probably the weaker two names at the moment. So now we're going to move into a watch list. This is going to be kind of a, a, a lightning round. We're going to look at about a dozen stocks. So we're putting together our watch list. You know, we're beginning the process all over again after we get a correction. We just talked about the stocks that are the strongest in the market right now are the ones that have not corrected much. And some of them are continuing to push to all-time highs, which is very, very impressive given the correction. They're showing relative strength. Now, some of those names that are showing relative strength are NVIDIA, CellH, uh, Vertiv, and Broadcom. So they're acting really uh, very strong amid the correction. Now, even though our playground is growth stocks, um, there are other sectors that are acting well and have some strength, oil and gas, the home builders, and pharma names. So I've listed a bunch of symbols here, and you should look at some of these. These are some of the stronger names in oil and gas, home builders, as well as some pharma uh, names. They really have, have been acting very well and they may have potential, but we're not gonna cover them in great detail in this video. We're gonna get into this kind of lightning round. I'm gonna look at 12 charts. Now I'm gonna look at very quickly, I'm gonna take you through what I see as the positives on these charts. And I'll also highlight some of the negatives or things to be concerned about on the charts. It's all gonna be with weekly charts. So we're stepping back to get a better perspective on the companies. Now, I put out a GMU Extra this morning. It was titled The Three Most Important Weeks in the Base. And I did that purposely knowing that we're going to review weekly charts um, in a minute. So it very quickly shows you that if you want to get a quick read on a base showing either accumulation or distribution, you know, you can look at that hack that I gave you this morning and um, apply it to some of the stocks you're interested in. So let's launch into this. Here's Vertiv, VRT, one of the strongest stocks in the market right now. What I like about this chart, weekly chart, is I like that the stock is pushing to all-time highs, even amidst a corrective period uh, for growth stocks. You can see that the relative strength line is soaring. Look at this, this relative strength line. It doesn't get much better than this. Very few kinks in the line, and it's pointing right to one o'clock. Excellent action, and it's a 99 RS. Now, it has strong forward estimates. That's a positive. You can see here, big, healthy numbers for 2023 and 2024. And mutual funds have been buying the stock for three quarters in a row. You can see each quarter here, more and more funds are piling into the stock with quite a bit piling in in the last quarter. Earnings and sales look good, and it's in the right sector which is electrical power. And this is particularly relative to server farms. They provide cooling and power systems, particularly with the intensity of AI server farms. So you can see we had a gap up on earnings, very strong, and it's been acting well since. Even prior to the gap, the stock was up somewhere around three, six, maybe nine weeks in a row. And look at the volume spikes. This is just exactly what you want to see. So Vertiv is one of the leaders in the market. And I will disclose that I have a position in this stock. Here's Celsius Holdings, another very strong stock. Again, all-time highs. I like to see that. Relative strength line, 
all-time highs. Like to see that as well. Strong forward estimates. You can see here next year, another 30% growth. And you can see that the earnings and sales are really, really picking up. They're accelerating the sales side and starting to drive big quarterly earnings. And the funds have been paying attention as well. The funds are up for three quarters in a row. All of this is very positive. You can see the blue spikes and the stock is acting very, very well in a corrective period for the market. Uber is the next one I wanted to share. Now, what I like about Uber's chart is we had a nice move higher from this base and the stock corrected, but the correction came right down to the 50 day and stopped going down. Essentially, it's really paused right around the 50 day moving average, excuse me, the 10 week on the weekly chart. And you'll notice what's really constructive is the volume is completely dried up on the pullback. So that's also a constructive sign that there's not a lot of heavy selling going on on the pullback. So only a 13% correction with the dry up has strong forward estimates for 2024 at 59%. And again, mutual funds are moving into the stock. You can see three quarters of increases in mutual funds. So Uber, I think, has really some potential here. If it can form a proper base and fill this out, it might get another leg if it can break out of a base. Here's Splunk. This is a recent stock that basically had an earnings gap up. And it had some nice follow through on the daily chart on the earnings gap. It was up multiple days in a row, which is really positive. So it's a big breakout, really, frankly, from a kind of a sloppy, loose consolidation. Now, it has good forward estimates. You can see 2024 is a 40% increase in earnings. So that's really positive. The negatives on this chart, what I don't like about Splunk is I don't like that it's really moving into a zone of overhead supply. You can see all of this, these buyers over here that are underwater are probably going to be sellers when the stock moves into the 120 to 150 range. So a lot of overhead supply um, knocks down the strength of the stock. Also, the wide and loose price action is a negative. You can see this stock is volatile and choppy. Um, this stock is not a smooth price action. Um, and that makes it really tough to hold. And it actually is pretty high on the pain meter with these ups and downs. So they can really drive you nuts. Now, overhead supply, I mentioned. So Splunk is way down here. I think it's got a lot of work to do. It's okay, but it's certainly got some flaws. Here's App Lovin'. Now, App Lovin', this is actually a turnaround play. This is a company that specializes in identifying online users for mobile marketers. And App Lovin' used to churn out a lot of free mobile games, and then they would um, feed, feed them to marketers and advertisers, and that was part of their business model. And a couple of years ago, Apple started to restrict tracking users' activities, so made it harder for App Lovin', so the stock really tanked. Now, App Lovin' has gone back to the drawing boards and really upgraded and optimized its ad optimization program and using AI, which is helping to the marketing partners to actually get to the type of users they're looking for. So it's really a turnaround. So that's just a little bit on the fundamentals. But what do I like about the chart? Had a gap up on earnings and it's been acting well ever since. And you can notice the tight price action. If you recall the Splunk chart, um, the spreads were really wide. Look how controlled this uptrend is. Even after the gap, these are very controlled um, price spreads. I like to see that. It means the institutions are controlling the stock. You can see big blue volume spike, a couple of them in the past few months. Um, the strong up-down volume ratio of 2.1. That's a very strong showing accumulation. Now, probably the, the knock on this stock is it's been a, you know, it's a turnaround. So it has a very spotty past with its earnings and its sales. You can see here, it's got sales that are that are um, not good year over year, perking up a little bit. It's just been very choppy and erratic. So they, you know, they're showing a, a decent number for 2024 and the stock is certainly reflecting institutional activity. So it's a turnaround. Um, it may have some potential. Now here's Appfolio, A-P-P-F. Now this stock, um, also is in a base right now. It had a base forming. And you'll notice that coming up the right side of the base, I like the big blue spike, which shows a lot of big blue range and a blue week is really good to see on the right side. As it came down and undercut the 10 week, it actually got support at the 65 EMA. So it got some support where we would expect institutions to come in. And you can notice that the relative strength line has been very strong. And the relative strength line is at new highs 
before we've broken out of the base. So that's subtle, but that's important. Now, big estimate for 2024. We'd like to see that. The big danger in this stock, I think, is it's very thin. And what I mean by thin, it only trades 120,000 shares a day. Even as a $200 stock, that's not a lot of um, daily volume on the stock, which makes it difficult for institutions to take too much of a position. So if you're a smaller trader with a smaller account, that might be something that you can get involved with, but you need to be aware that these can get whipped around a little bit um, if an institution starts to sell. Next on my list is Make My Trip. This is a um, Indian online travel services company. Now it's been this long, you can notice the choppy action, widespreads, choppy and wide and loose action, but notice this last consolidation Ever since the bottom, things have tightened up. The ranges are tightening up and we're starting to see blue spikes as we came up the right side of the base and it's near new highs. You'll see that constant theme. I like stocks that are at all time highs. So the earnings had a gap and it's been acting very well post gap. Again, great forward estimates. We can see 2024 and 25 are robust at 83% and 52%. The relative strength line again, very strong, it's very, very strong line. Um, but again, the danger with this stock, similar to the last one is it's fairly thin, only trades a half a million shares a day. So it's not gonna be appropriate for people that have larger accounts. The numbers look good the last few quarters. Um, if you take a smaller position or if you have a smaller account, this again might be a stock to have on your watch list. It's showing some good volume characteristics. Here's Excellus. This is another one, and this is in the semiconductor equipment space. Stocks had a nice run over the past year, and it's forming a base, came down below the 10-week moving average. I like that it's very close to all-time highs, and this is a company that has a multiple catalysts on the fundamental side. They, have, they make equipment, and they have a um, special implant chip equipment device that's used for the silicon carbide chips, and that's used in EV vehicles, driver assist systems, AI, and 5G. So it's the right place at the right time to making the right equipment. So I think there's going to be even stronger demand. Um, the numbers are okay. And again, funds are increasing. Um, it's a stage three base right now. So we need to be aware of that one, two, third stage. So it's, you know, it's not early in the move. Um, just be aware of that. And the funds are coming into the stock still. We can see funds are up for three quarters. That's still really strong. And it's in a very strong group. The semiconductor equipment group is number eight ranked. So it's also in the right group, even though there's been a pause in the market. This could be setting up a launching pad for another leg higher. Axon Enterprise. I like the fact that the stock is fairly close to all-time highs. Um, this stock has sequential sales growth. You'll notice here, if you look at the actual numbers from 285 each quarter, sequentially the sales are, are driving higher. That's a good characteristic. The earnings are also accelerating higher. We like to see that. The number, I don't know why the 2024 number is only 8%. That's a little bit cautionary. Maybe that gets revised upward. Um, the base is an odd looking base though. The negatives here are, we had this large week down on high volume. Then the stock came and drifted all the way back down below the two, the 40 week moving average. Then it had a big spike higher. It's just an odd structure right now. Um, I think it's going to have to do some work before it can actually potentially make a run. And the other thing that's not good is the relative strength line is lagging. So this stock has some flaws, even though it has some nice things, it has flaws, but it might be something to watch. It may improve and, and uh, improve its position. Here's Arista Networks, um, one of the stronger stocks the last month. Again, it's near all-time highs, so I consider that a positive. You'll notice also sequential sales growth. Look at the numbers. Um, right here, you can see from 105.1, every quarter of the sales are getting stronger and stronger. So that's positive. Um, good earnings, solid earnings are on the table. We can see them. It's good to see. And 2023 number looks good. The 2024 number looks fairly modest at this stage. Good return on equity. Now, the negatives, I think, with Arista are it's been a very um, erratic stock. 
the past year. It's had some great weeks. It looks like it's going to blast off. And then all of a sudden it gets slammed back down into the base. It's had some wide red weeks of distribution. And then we get these spikes of blue. So it's very, it's a tough one to hold. It's erratic. Um, and I also don't like the fact that you can see the relative strength line is still not cleared a new high to confirm the breakout. So that's a cautionary sign. On the positive side, it did have the largest volume in two years from this big blue spike. So maybe the stock is getting set up for a run with institutions coming in. Um, but again, tough one to hold. At least it's been a tough one to hold the past year because it's been kind of erratic price action. Here's Carpenter Technology. This is in a different group. This is in the steel special alloys. Now, again, I like the chart. I like the fact that we're at all time highs. I like the fact that we've got very strong earnings and sales. The last three quarters have been very robust. And you'll look at the estimates. The estimates in 2024 um, that they're, they're already at 217% and the strong forecast for 2025. That's all really positive stuff. I also am very attracted to the relative strength line. See how steady it is? Very, very steady no erratic kinks up and down. And you can see that the price action has been steadily higher and it's showing some nice signs here. Now, again, the cautionary part about this stock is it um, not, does not have a lot of liquidity, only trades 338,000 shares a day. Again, so it's fairly thin and not appropriate for a lot of bigger portfolios. But I do think it's an interesting stock. I think it's got some good numbers. It seems to be um, a decent group, 44. It's almost in the top 50 groups. So it's something to consider. It's certainly showing good action. Next is Light and Wonder. This is in the leisure gaming area. Now, this stock is the former Scientific Games, which actually had some nice runs um, in its past. So what do we see here? Again, we see a stock that's within striking distance of all-time highs. I like to see it. Now, forward estimates are also strong. Next year, they're looking at 139% increase in their earnings. Um, you can see the stock has broken out of a longer consolidation, and the relative strength line is at new highs, confirming the breakout. So I like that. Now, the downside on this is we're seeing that it's in a very, very weak group right now. It's only 164. And you'll notice that the funds are declining. So those funds are net um, lower than they were three quarters ago. So that's not encouraging either. Maybe there's not a lot of interest in the stock right now, um, but it does show um, some nice tight action with accumulation going on. You can see the blue spikes that are supporting an uptrend. So there's some pluses, there's some minuses, but it may have some potential. So that's my group of 12 watch list stocks. Now let's look at a wrap up. So if I were to wrap up, I, I think this rally so far this week has really not been that convincing so far. We talked about the internals. The internals are fairly weak, very slow volume week, which can give us some false signals um, rising on lower volume. So it's not a great picture, but probably most importantly, there are very little things to buy that are in proper bases. Most things that the really strong names are extended. So you really can't go after those right now. And we need time for these other names to form proper bases. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but we know, and we have to be very open-minded here because things can change rapidly. After Labor Day, you know, maybe the institutions come back with an appetite for growth stocks and things really kick in and we see the breadth and we see new highs and we see some really strong uh, volume. That would be encouraging. Um, at the same time, this little um, pocket of rise this week could be taken out in a day or two next week if it's not for real. So we have to be really open-minded here as we go into tomorrow, Friday, as well as next week. I think exposure levels should still be very defensive, maybe zero to 20%, but that's just my thought. You may be more aggressive or more conservative. So the quote of the week, we're going to use one from Groucho Marx. So who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? So in this video, I'm sharing what I'm seeing and how I'm interpreting actually what I'm seeing on the charts and some of the breadth. Um, you need to use your eyes to assess the market and what works for you. Um, you need to decide if you should be moving into the market 
or being defensive. So it's your choice, and we'll see you next week. That's the market update for August 31st, 2023. We'll see you next week.